Trust me, I never, I never knew what went on in his mind. Where is he now? I don't know. He went up north, I think. When did you last see him? About a year ago. Photograph? No. Well, can you give us a description? He's got black hair. Something in a factory. Well, what? A, a machine minder, a foreman, a cleaner, what? I don't know. He never told me. Well, how long were you married? Ten years. <laughs> Too long. Why did you get divorced? I don't know. It just didn't get on. children? A little girl. You're in for a few nightmares. Two seven, Mrs. Siegel speaking. Is my phone out of order? Mm. Sure. Mm. Yes, well, I was expecting a very important call last night. Mm. Mm. Yes, well, things have been known to go astray on your exchange before now. Really, women like this didn't ought to be allowed. Sure to be put away or something. Wang, bingo. You better check that out. Right. Any leads on the husband? Not yet.
These are bastard cases to work on. You got a strong stomach? Nothing's happened yet. It will. There's a predictability about them. It could be a simple explanation. Don't take me too seriously, lad. Mrs. Duffy won't be coming this morning. Why not? Don't know. She told me to come and tell you. Forty-five thousand statements. It took fifteen months, and it was only luck that solved it. You are coming today. Oh yes, sure. What time? About five o'clock. And, and you can stay over till Monday. Yes. Ah, oh, good. Ah, uh -huh. Jean and the children. Very well. Good. Their beds are all made up. Good. How's father? Oh, he's he's fine. Uh, yes. Good. Yes. No, I, I've just driven him to the station. How how did the board go last week? Sometimes it breaks. Do you ever see her after school? Do you go out together after school? No, we live in different villages and, well, my mum doesn't like me staying out late. Who does know her very well? Do any of the girls very close? Yes, uh, I think Jackie is her name. Uh, she's, she's in the same class. I Well, she loves doing things with her hands. You know, sewing, embroidery, painting, all that sort of thing. Oh, and drawing. You can't stop her drawing. She ought to go into some sort of design, I think. She's been going out with a married man. Who told you that? Sandra. She's my best friend. Have you ever seen this man? No. Did she ever tell you what he looked like? He's got dark hair. He's very tall. About seven foot tall. He's got a big car. He looks like Tom Jones. And he smokes. How old are you, Susan? Eleven. Is she very bright? Not especially. I'd say about average. She'll fail at eleven plus, of course. Oh, yes, there she is. Attendance, all right. No aptitude for any particular subject. So she wants to be a designer. She's not good enough, I'm afraid. History, fair. Art, fair. Scripture, fair. General conduct needs discipline. That's about it. Have you met the mother? Oh, yes, several times. And the father? Yes. What did you think of them? Well, they seemed a pleasant enough couple. They were divorced a year ago. Really? I've no idea. When did you last see her father? Has he picked her up from school recently? Can't honestly remember. It's difficult with so many children. Wait a minute, though. Is he a thick-set man with fair hair and a ruddy complexion? Works on a farm? No. Who's he? Come on, follow on. You order. Good morning, John. Morning, Mrs. Siegel. When are you going to do the front? Mr. Siegel asked me to get on here. Oh, well, never mind about that. Mr. Mark and his family are arriving this afternoon, and I want it to look nice for them. When I finish this. Well, Mrs. Duffy never arrived this morning. That's right. Do you know why? Her daughter was taken to the police station this morning. 
sorry to hear that. Chandra didn't get back from school yesterday. Oh, Mrs. White's child? Yes. Well, that's terrible. Do you know what's happened to her? I don't know. Well, I've got to go into Haverton this morning, so you'll have to make your own tea. Thank you, Mrs. Siegel. Are you Jackie Saunders? Good. Uh, well, there's nothing to be frightened of. I'm a police officer. I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, you know Sandra White, don't you? Good. Um, uh, do you go home with her on the bus to Rupperton? Yes. Ah. Have you seen this girl before? Oh, that one. Sandra something. She looks a bit younger there. Where have you seen her? She's usually on the 4.30 bus to Upperton. Was she on it yesterday? No, she wasn't. Definitely she wasn't, because I remember asking her friend where she was. Oh, and what did she say? Ah, she's a cheeky bit, her friend. Said she'd gone out with her boyfriend. Of course, I knew she was giving me some lip. Well, we came out of school and went down to the shop because Sandra wanted to buy a Romeo magazine. Romeo? Mm-hmm. And where did she get the money? She said she was going to spend her bus fare. And how was she going to get home? She, she said that she was going to get a lift. A lift? Mm. From whom, did she say? No. Had she ever got a lift before? No. And were you with her when she got this lift? No. So you didn't see her get a lift at all? No. I see. And uh, from what bus stop was this? From the Upperton Road. Mm. And when you caught the bus, what time was it? I don't know, but it was dark. It was dark? Mm hmm Is Mr. Siegel there? What do you mean he's not with you anymore? Is Mr. Weatherbridge there? Well, do you know where I could get hold of him? Are you expecting him back today? No, he's not coming back. Why does he call you? No. No, I'll ring on Monday. That's the bus stop. Right. Check out these houses on both sides. Someone might have seen her. are going to need water wings to search this little lot. You better set up a road check along here. Right. Most of the cars along here will use it regularly. They may have seen something.
Billy Siegel here. Uh, Mrs. Siegel's gone out. Oh, for heaven's sake, John, get off the line. Oh, thank you for calling back, Jenny. Look, I'm afraid Arthur's in bed with flu. Yes, sir, we'll have to call Saturday off. Well, I'm sorry about this. Oh, no, no, I'm afraid he's not well enough to see anyone. Yes, we'll try and make it another time. Yes. Well, love to Nigel. Bye. contacted the father. She could have gone off with him. The mother doesn't think so. Since when did she start thinking? We better get hold of some frogmen and a dredging unit. Mrs. Seagull? Oh, did you take the spare tire out of the car? It isn't there. I, yes, it had a slow puncture. Y your husband told me to repair it. I'll get it. to attack them. Little girls make an easy substitute. Rubbish. She sounds a randy little thing. She's probably off on a joyride with her married man while we're in this godforsaken place.
they ought to be ready when I get back from Haverton. I hate going without a spare. Yes, Mrs. Seagull. Thanks. Hey, read that. Look. There. Oh. oh, let's hope this one doesn't turn out like that. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, madam. Um, we're making inquiries into a little girl who's gone missing. Perhaps you can help us. I had to stop behind you because there was something coming in the opposite direction. I couldn't get by. What kind of car was it? A station wagon. What make? I don't know. They all look so alike these days, don't they? Colour? I'm pretty sure it was black. It could have been dark green or blue. Sorry, but they all look black at night. Yeah, don't worry. Did you see anybody getting into the car? Sorry to inconvenience you, madam. Do you often travel along this road? Frequently. Were you along here any time between 3.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. yesterday evening? No. Any members of your family? No. My husband was in London all day yesterday. I see. Sorry to have troubled you, madam. There was a dent in the back. Quite a bad one. I just remembered. Whereabouts? Uh, on the driver's side. There was a piece of glass missing from the brake light. Did you see anybody getting into the car? There, the, uh, the driver was leaning across, trying to shut the passenger door. He had two or three goals. Did you overtake the car? Mm. When the road was clear, I pulled out and passed him. He was still stationary. Did you see the driver? Mm, not a good look. He turned his head as I went by. So you can't describe him? Only that he had dark hair. That's all I saw. And your phone number? Alperton 573. Sorry, I can't be more helpful. There's a better tool. Ten rounds, straight up. Nine ten, 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 nine ten,
This town's another patent place. Here's a chap who was kinky about women's shoes. James Cooper, 47, arrested 1867 for grabbing a shore for a woman in Fisherton Street. Upon investigation, over 100 assorted women's shoes found in his bedroom. Better check on him. She wouldn't accept a lift from no strange man. I told her never to talk to strangers, and she always does as she's told. Whatever Sandra is, she's an obedient girl. Does she have any boyfriends in the village? <laughs> Grief, no. She's only 11 years old. How often do you play bingo? Two or three times a week. Then how can you be so sure you know what Sandra does in the evenings? Girls of 11 have been known to have boyfriends. Have any older men in the village been taking an interest in her? Have any offered to take her to the playground or the cinema? Well, everyone likes Sandra. I've never heard a bad word against her. Don't interrupt, Ben. Melissa slept most of the way, didn't you? Yes. I put you in the same rooms as before. Oh, good. Will the children want anything to eat before they go to bed? No. Ben, be careful with that. Oh, come on, Ben. Hello, Mother. <laughs> Hello, darling. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Will you go on up, Jean? You know where everything is. How's Arthur, Phyllis? Oh, he's fine. Will you bring the children's slippers when you come down? Put them by the garden door, the usual place. Right. I'll be in the garden, Mark. In the garden? So far, we've managed to trace three people who actually saw the man in the car. A woman who lives near the bus stop, a cyclist who passed him on the Upperton Road, and a motorist who had to stop behind him. None of them got a very good look, so the identikit boys will be working overtime tonight. Now, only two facts seem to have emerged from the evidence so far. One, he was driving an estate car, and two, he had dark hair. But I think there are four things which we must bear in mind. A one, I feel sure he was a local man. A somehow, I don't think even Sandra White would have accepted a lift from a total stranger. I feel sure she knew him. Two, there's the point I've already mentioned about the fact he was driving an estate car. Now, this could be important. Estate cars aren't cheap either to buy or to run. Of course, there's always the fact that uh, she might be with her father. I'll be glad when we've traced him. Now, my third point is that I don't think that anyone would take the risk of driving through Upperton with the girl in the car. So we're going to search all this area tomorrow just in case. And fourthly, you can be pretty sure that at least one local person knows who the murderer is, but simply can't believe it. Now, very likely that person will lead us to him. Please. 
probably gone away for the firm and simply forgotten to tell you. You know what a dreamer Arthur is? No, I'm terribly worried, Mark. Well, maybe he just wanted to be alone to think about, I don't know, anything. Oh, don't be silly, Mark. He wouldn't do a thing like that. Something awful's happened. He's, he's had an accident or something. If you're so worried, go to the police. Well, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, I just couldn't. No. Oh, I, I don't want Jean to know. Not just yet, anyway. What are you going to tell her? Oh, that he's gone away on business. <laughs> on his 50th birthday? He'll probably turn up tomorrow. Can't you think what he could have been doing in Haverton yesterday? Are you absolutely sure that's what Carol said? Yes. I couldn't ask her any more. She's a dreadful gossip. Oh, you must be mistaken. She saw him in London. She shops at the store sometimes, doesn't she? Yes. Well, that explains it, then. I mean, if he's... If he's hiding, he wouldn't go to Haverton. I've gone over and over it in my mind. I sometimes wonder if he's got a woman there. Oh, come off it, mother. Perhaps he went there for money. Why have it? Well, they knew him at the bank. What's that got to do with it? He didn't have a checkbook. We agreed it was for the best. For the best? Well, he was spending far too much. I couldn't let it go on. Well, what about his own money? His salary? Cheer you up a bit? What's that? There. Uh, Can I have a half a bit of love, please? I don't find that the least bit funny. This is not a game, lad. I'm sorry? I want you and Lorrymore to go over to Upperton. We're taking statements from everyone in the village, right? Right. What's that all about? Never you mind. How exactly did you overhear this conversation? I just did. And she said her husband was in bed with flu. That's right. But he's not in that house, I know it. How long have you been working for Mrs. Siegel? I worked for Mr. Siegel. How long? I think his chin stuck out more. Like this? Yes. Has Arthur been there before? No. It's rather an important contract. Oh, I expect he'll enjoy himself. Pity he's away on his birthday, though. I don't think I'd let Mark go there on his own. Why not? With all those beautiful blondes. Yes. <laughs> you know, I thought Arthur was leaving. Really? Yes. Well, when we were here at Christmas, he was talking about finding another job. Oh, I don't think so. They've offered him a place on the board. Really? Well, that's good. Yes, he's been furniture buyer long enough. We need someone on that board. It's never been the same since Grandfather died, has it, Mother? <sighs> he always told me how much he hated those awful people who took it over. Did he? Well, he gets on very well with them. They respect his experience.
how does that fit? Oh, the trouble is, I didn't really see him that clearly. No, 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 no. Great-grandfather had already built the store by then. I see. So your father took it over when he died. That's right. It must have been an incredible place to go to in those days. Well, Mother and I lived out here. We didn't go there very often. He was a fantastic old man. Remember when he carried me on his shoulders? Late one night when the storm was closed. I swear he knew every item in the place. And then I escaped from him in the bedding department and was jumping around from one bed to another and he was trying to catch me. Did he ever tell you about that? <laughs> Why did he commit suicide? He didn't. He died of pneumonia. Oh, the eyes seemed a little closer together. Like this? Oh, yes. Uh... Yes, you could actually see the heart pumping away. Marvellous program. Arthur would have loved it. Why did he give up medicine? The war. Well, he could have gone on afterwards. I don't know. I mean, some prisoners of war even continued their studies in the camps. Well, Arthur didn't. What was he like when he came back, Phyllis? And how about it? Well, to be honest, it's not much like him. At least, not the way I see him. Who the hell can that be? Car. Really, at this time of night? Oh, it must be about the accident. What accident? Oh, someone ran into the back of the car in Haverton. You told me he committed suicide. He did. And for God's sake, stop talking about Arthur. Why? He's left her. Oh. Good evening, madam. Mm -hmm. uh, could we have a few words with you, please? Oh, yes, of course. Will you come in? Thank you. <sighs> She's going to be as upset as hell when she hears I've quit. You can't tell her till this is blown over. But they're expecting a down payment on the bloody workshop equipment next week. Where else am I supposed to get it from? He would choose this weekend to go. And where is your husband now? He's gone to Stockholm. When did he go? On Thursday morning. What is your husband doing, Mrs. Siegel? He's the director of Whitehall's, the department store in Kensington. And can you tell us why he's gone to Stockholm? I think it's to buy furniture. Are there any other male members in the household at the moment? Only my son, and he arrived this afternoon with his wife and children. He's an executive... Yes, right. well, I don't think we need trouble him. Thank you, Mrs. Siebel. Thank you very much, Mrs. Siegel. Good night. She was lying about her husband. I know.
Sandra's never been away from home before. Naturally, we are very concerned. Could she have been kidnapped? Oh, that's always a possibility. We have an open mind. Ben, mind the wall with your feet. Right, bring all the uh, tracker dogs over now, will you please? And we'll cover area B. All the tracker dogs over here, please, but area B. I'm sorry Jean kept on about Arthur last night. <laughs> She's a blunt girl. You don't like her much, do you? Oh, that's not true. I'm very fond of her. Why'd you say that? I don't know. Sometimes you seem a bit cold towards her. Why not? Am I? Well, she seems to think so. Why, well, I am sorry. You happy, Mark? Happy? I suppose so. You know, sometimes I think it's totally impossible to make marriage work. Everything's all right between you. I mean any marriage. You were so young when you met Jean. I sometimes wish you'd waited till you left university. You don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems crazy to expect two people to spend the whole of their adult lives together without killing each other or dying of boredom. Do you know what I mean? I'm sorry to hear you talk like this. Why? Just am. Even after five years of marriage, we both see how we're eating each other up. I'm sure all marriages are the same. Don't talk like that, Mark. Daddy, Daddy, monsters! What monsters? Monsters! All right, come on, let's go and have a look. To us. Don't worry about it. What are they doing, I wonder? The dreadful things happened in the village. 
A little girl's missing. Oh. Why didn't you tell us? It would have spoiled your weekend. It's nothing to do with us, anyway. Mm. When did she go missing? Thursday. Sorry to trouble you again, Mrs. Siegel. I'm afraid we have another official inquiry. Well, that's all right. Which of the cars do you and your husband drive? The estate car. Do you mind if I take a look at it? No, of course not. Thank you. Can you remember who drove the car on Thursday, Mrs. Siegel? Thursday? My husband took it to the garage for a service. Uh, which garage is that? Mr. Bailey's in the village. You're quite sure that was Thursday? Yes. Mr. Bailey drove my husband to the station, then he took the car back to the garage, and I collected it myself in the evening. I see. Well, thank you, madam. I'm sorry we've had to trouble you again, but oh, we must be thorough, you understand? Oh, don't be sorry. sexually assaulted before death. Now, the yard had been called in, but uh, I think we can manage to carry on until they get here. <laughs> now, there are two missing objects which might be of some importance. One, a copy of Romeo. It's a girl's magazine which Sandra White bought just before she died. And the other is her right shoe. This is her left one. Snow and blizzards again brought chaos to Britain this morning. 
hundreds of roads were blocked and many motorists were stranded. Snow plows were out in most counties, although some country roads still remained impassable tonight. In the south, the sun came out during the afternoon and many families took advantage of the wintry conditions. Toboggans were out in force, sliding down the heaths of London, sometimes without their owners. And the forecast for tonight and tomorrow, more snow. Sandra White, the 12-year-old girl who disappeared after leaving school on Thursday, was found dead late this afternoon. A massive search was mounted this morning on the marshland near Haverton in Berkshire. Did he say Haverton? Hmm? Did he say Haverton? Yes. Well, Sandra's never been away from home before. You knew. Oh, very... Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't want to worry. The kids have been out all day. And I've been with them all day. She had been brutally assaulted. The oh, government have promised that kids the plans mother. for the London motorway box she must be going road, mad. The two inner circles proposed by the GLC. <laughs> My dear brethren, I'm not going to preach to you this morning, for what can one possibly say on a day such as this? You have all read in the newspapers the dreadful thing that has happened in our midst. Let us only remember that nothing is so dreadful that it cannot be forgiven. Good morning. Good morning, Vicar. Very good, sir. Thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Vicar. Hello. <laughs> oh, Mark. Uh, will the children be coming to our the children's service this afternoon? Well, I really... Yes, of course they are, Dick. Good. Now, why don't you all take tea with me afterwards? <laughs> Bring Arthur. Good morning, Vicar. Good morning. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning. Uh, as a matter of fact, Arthur's away this weekend. Mm. Pity. Still, I don't suppose he'd have come anyway, do you? <laughs> Your father and I don't always see eye to eye. Police again. What can they want this time? Oh, here we are again, Mrs. Siegel. And how can we help you this time? Um, it's your car, I'm afraid. Oh, well, what about it? We'd prefer not to say at the moment. It's just that um, it might be connected with the case we're investigating. You're not going to take it away, are you? I'm afraid we are. Have you got written authority? Yes, sir. Oh, well, I'd better get the things out uh, of the We'd back. prefer it if you left everything just as it is. We'll let you know when you can have it back. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, when did you say your husband was coming back? 
I don't think you asked me. Didn't I? Oh, very silly. When is he coming back? I think it's sometime next weekend. Thank you very much. Mark, what's going on? Why are they taking the car away? Mark, answer me. Mother, why did you lie to the pigs like that? Is there something you haven't told me? I still have a feeling you're not telling me everything. You don't... You don't think he's got anything to do with it? You saw them take the car away. In front of the whole village. Mother, forget the village. You still don't think he's involved in this business, do you? But you can't. Just because they've taken the car away doesn't mean the old man's done anything wrong. The car was at the garage all day Thursday anyway, you know that. It's a little girl, isn't it? It is? The car. How do you know? I just know. Mother, look at me. No, look at me. Do you think for one moment that Arthur is capable of a crime like that? I honestly don't know. He's become so strange over the years. You haven't seen so much of him since you left home. But he can't have become that strange. He's drinking too much. So? Oh, he's never been the same since the war. I sometimes think he's sort of deranged. You're exaggerating, Mother. Well, I, I tried everything I could. I, I had to push him into that job in the store, otherwise he'd have drifted around forever. He's full of mad schemes for building boats, opening stables, that sort of thing. Face that sort of person. He, he never took any interest in you, in the house or anything. I, I had to keep on and on at him. But you still can't convince me he's a murderer. Oh, come on, Mother, you can't be serious. You know what you're saying. The father went out, picked up a little girl, murdered her, sexually assaulted her and left her to, to rot in the marshes. You think he could do a thing like that? Oh. One car rack. One car run. One knapsack. One knapsack. Hey. I carried in these when we came back from Persia. As a joke, and I don't suppose he's looked at them since. Honestly. All right. You can bring him in now. Right, sir. Old man. Yes, the one who came up and spoke to us at the church. Oh, Phyllis in him? You must be joking. No, I'm not. But did Arthur know about it? Yes, yes, he told me one day in his cups. He told you? Oh. But how did he find out? Uh, I did know, but I've forgotten. But when, when was all this? Oh, it must have been about five or six years ago. But what happened? I don't know. I suppose the fellow must have dropped her. Oh, poor Arthur. No. It was all over between him and Mum long before that. Well, then why did they stay together? Heaven knows. I suppose Arthur must have felt sorry for her. Do you know why he left so suddenly? 
had enough, I should think. Oh, what a nightmare. So she must be mad if she thinks that he could have had anything to do with it. Mm. Oh. I hope we never end up like that. The old man got a bit steamed up with you the other day, didn't he? Yeah, miserable bastard. What was all that about? Oh, I showed him this thing in the paper. They just picked up a child murder in Liverpool. Took them nine years. Thought it might have cheered him up. Idiot. Hey, that's her, isn't it? Mrs. Siegel? Yeah. Going towards Happerton. What should we do now? Well, I suppose we could always try to chat up the butler into living us having a drink while we wait for her to come back. Where have you been? Shopping. They're here again. I know. Good morning, Mrs. Siegel. There are just one or two points we'd like to clarify. Please sit down, would you? Thank you. <clears throat> you said that your husband took the estate car down to Bailey's garage on Thursday morning and Bailey drove him onto the station. Yes. Bailey then took the car back to the garage to service it. Yes. And you collected it that same evening? Yes. At what time? About seven. Mr. Bailey left the car outside. The keys were under the seat. Did your husband know about this arrangement? Yes, we often did it. Mm -hmm. Did you... Oh, just a minute, Bob. 
When you picked up the car, you didn't happen to find a child's shoe inside it, did you? No. Thank you, Mrs. Siegel. You've been very helpful. Uh, you realize, of course, that both you and your husband will be required to give evidence at Bailey's trial. Bailey? That's right. Well, that, that'll be very difficult for my husband. He's on business in Stockholm. Uh, yes, well, I think you should know, Mrs. Siegel, in your own interest, that we spoke to your husband yesterday. He's living in a flat in London. I see. We'll let you both know when you're needed in court. And, um, you're quite sure nobody came across the child's shoe in the car? Quite sure. Thank you again, Mrs. Siegel. You've been very helpful. 